Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. Good evening, everyone. As uh, I see you, you all joining tonight, El Museu, for our Popular Painters program. It is my, uh, my big pleasure to welcome here tonight my former colleague at uh, MASP, and the museum's chief curator, Tomás Toledo. Hi, Tomás. Hi, Rodrigo. How are you? Fun. Fine. You're good? All right. So thanks for the invitation. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and thank you, everyone who's uh, still joining us tonight for Popular Painters and Other Visionaries in Conversation program. I'm Rodrigo Moura, I'm the chief curator of El Museo del Barrio. And this program is part of El Museo in Tucasa, um, the museum's online bilingual initiative. Uh, we want to thank uh, the New York Community Trust, New York City COVID-19 Response and Impact Fund for supporting the exhibition and the program tonight. Uh, thank you so much another time, Tomas. So this is, uh, without, uh, without much further, I, I wanted to start by just giving you some um, context. So this is uh, a program we're hosting tonight around popular painters and other visionaries. That is a, uh, an online exhibition that El Museo del Barrio uh, launched uh, three weeks ago. Uh, th this is El Museo's, actually El Museo's first online exhibition and in, it's an exhibition I curated uh, around um, some, uh, an initial group of works coming from El Museo's collection around popular themes popular painters and other visionaries. So this is an exhibition that really uh, is part of El Museo's ongoing and um, co continued uh, commitment to redefine art beyond the European canon, beyond the Eurocentric narratives. So this is an exhibition that uh, examines the contribution of 30 popular artists or so-called so -called popular artists working in different parts of the Americas and the Caribbean around 20th century, uh, mid-century, uh, between the 40s and the 70s. And that show, Popular Painters, was originally conceived, as I say, as a collection display that was going to take place um, in the museum galleries during this uh, during the summer, but because of COVID and the quarantine imposed by COVID uh, since March, we, me and my team and our museum, we've been uh, we reconceived the show and we restructured it to be a show also with several loans uh, and. Uh, so MASP is the Museu de Arte de São Paulo. This is where I was working before joining El Museu a little over a year ago. MASP is the Museu de Arte de São Paulo and among the several works or reproductions that were included in the, in the virtual online exhibitions, there are several, several coming from MASP's collection. And this is the whole popular investigation, the whole interest in popular as a leading narrative, uh, like a common thread uniting artists, joining artists in the Americas, especially in Brazil, is something that is part of MASP since uh, the beginning of the museum, the, since the creation of the museum by Lina Bardi and Pietro Bardi in the 1940s. So I invited Tomás Toledo, who is MASP's chief curator and has you know, curated several exhibitions at MASP around that theme to share a little bit with us tonight about the ongoing uh, relationship of MASP around uh, with the term popular, both historically 
since the 40s, as I said before, but also in how it's been reinterpreted, how it's been reconceived and reintroduced by the, by the current artistic program of, of, of MASP. So uh, Tomas is a former and dear colleague. Thank you so much again, Tomas. And uh, in the, this first block of the program tonight, Tomas will be sharing uh, some of his uh, uh, conclusions or research around the topic. And the, uh, for the next 10 or 15 minutes, he'll be sharing images with us. And then we will have a conversation and we also encourage you to share questions in the chat box. So, muito obrigado, Tomás. Um, thank you for the invitation again, Rodrigo. It's a pleasure to talk with you and with the audience of the El Museo del Bairro. I will start my, my presentation with um, a little uh, panorama about the relation between popular culture and the MASP, the Museum of Art, uh, the Sao Paulo Museum of Art. Um, it's very interesting because this relation uh, started in the beginning of the museum in 1947. Uh, this, this notion of popular culture and popular art uh, has been very been close to, to MASP since his foundation in 1947. And both the founding director of the museum, the Italian critic and Marcian Pietro Maria Bargi, and the Italian architect Lina Bobargi, uh, were very, clo uh, very close to, to this discussion at the time and very interesting in creating a museum more connected with the, uh, the, 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 the Brazilian culture, not only connected with the European or North American culture. Uh, in this sense, Pietro and Lina tried to create a museum without adjectives, a museum of art. A museum open to the non canonical productions, open to the popular culture, open to the, the, the modern art, open to the um, um, Renaissance art and Italian art, and uh, a lot of, of, of typologies of art in, in the museum. And, and especially Bobardi had a very uh, close relation with popular art uh, in Brazil. Uh, Pietro as, was more, more traditional, more, more Italian. Lina became more Brazilian in this sense. But both are very, very focused in this subject. Bobart's relationship with Brazilian popular culture developed from the early days of, the, of her work at MASP. In her elaboration of the museum's conceptual and architectural program, too, the notion of popular play a critical role in a proposal that creates a more accessible, democratic, and plural museum, in opposite the traditional museum, um, more canonical, eurocentric, um, falsified, um, a very, very classic museum. Uh, at Maspe, uh, actually, Maspe is the first modern museum in Brazil. Uh, found in 1947. Uh, and the museum was conceived based on a multidisciplinary design uh, and constituted an institution open to all, all forms of artistic expression, not only focused in ancient or modern art, but also focused in a space for education and training. This, this notion of education was very, very important for Lina and for Pietro too. Uh, Pietro Maria Bargen, in, in an article published in uh, Habitat magazine, a magazine uh, founded by Lina and Pietro in 1951, a very important publication in Brazil in this time, and very, um, very unique uh, in this book, Lina Bobadge Habitat, we reproduction a lot of covers is the, this, this, the first cover of the, this magazine. And in this number, actually in the number four, uh, Pietro wrote, 
uh, wrote, it's necessary to design a new museum outside of the narrow limits and prescription of traditional museum design. Organism and motion, not building for the narrow purpose of informing, but of instruction, not a passive collection of things, but a continuous exhibition and interpretation of civilization. Bard defended the diversification of the public museum goer, seeking to establish a more popular institution, a museum for everyone, which interests in everyone, not only for scholars and amusement of tourists. This notion of museum without adjectives, museum with for museum popular in this sense. Yeah. In dialogue with Bard's concept in the article, The Museum of Art of Sao Paulo, published in the, the Habitat magazine too, Bouvard sure. critique the notion of museum as an intellectual mausoleum and refutes the monumental architecture with the imperial staircase or super floors, adornments. She, she tried to simplify the, the museum architecture in the presentation of the artistic production, giving to the public more freedom for offering less targets readings in the work displayed. These proposals are read as, as very radical and become more radical and potent with uh, applied at MESP collection. That is the most important collection of European art in, in South America and actually in South Hemisphere uh, with a lot of important artists from the Renaissance, Impressionism, um, post impressionist modern art, Brazilian modern art, um, and this collection was um, not bought, but selected by Pietro Maria Bard in, in, in between of, of, um, 1946 until 1957-58 is the most important period that Bard selection works for Maspi. And the Masp commitment to these uh, themes, the popular themes and popular culture, uh, stands uh, through the Pietro Maria Bard's directorship between 1947 until 1996, a, a very long, very long administration of Pietro Maria Bard. The museum organizing and presenting the exhibition not only on renowned European and Brazilian art, but also devoted space and attention to vernacular production and self-taught artists, also known as popular artists. Um, artists who work outside of the tra traditional circuit uh, and outside of the academia. At MASP, we don't use um, artistas, naive, uh, naive artists or art brut, this kind of, of um, names. We prefer um, um, the artists uh, as no as popular artists. Um, uh, ex exemplary case was the pioneer exhibition Arte Popular Pernambucana that I show i show for you some image, a minute. It's okay. In this, in this image, we can see Lina Bobardin here and Pietro Maria Bart with the mustache here. Thomas, do you know who the other people in the picture are? Yes. Because I think Augusto Rodriguez was also involved. Yes. In show, no? I think Augusto Rodriguez is this guy close to Pietro Maria Bart on right. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. This is a, a exhibition is very, very uh, pioneer in the Brazilian context and 
mainly in Sao Paulo context because it was an exhibition uh, about uh, Mestre Vitalino, one of most important popular, uh, popular Brazilian artists. Uh, the name is Arte Popular Pernambucana, popular art from Pernambuco. Pernambuco is a state in northwest of Brazil, one of the most um, interesting states in, in, in Brazil in terms of art, popular culture, um, and, and literature, um, a lot of things. Uh, and the exhibition uh, was organized by August Rodriguez uh, with collaboration of Pietro Maria Vargi, but the, the research uh, was made by August Rodriguez. Pietro uh, and, and organized the, 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 the display of the exhibition. And do you think this was like the first time that the museum sh used the term popular or showed popular art? Yes, I think so. And yeah. it's the first time that this kind of material uh, was present uh, in, in Sao Paulo and, 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 and the state and the city in an official place, in a museum, not in a private collection. No? And is the, is, the, is, the, is the first exhibition about this, this, this subject at MASPES, uh, introduction, uh, this, this thematic to the public of Sao Paulo, uh, in the, this, the art circuits of Sao Paulo, is a very important exhibition. Um, the exhibition was organized for a um, um, public space in Rio de Janeiro uh, first. And two months ago, uh, after uh, Bargin invited uh, August Rodriguez to organize together at, in Sao Paulo this, this, the same exhibition. Not this exactly the same with some uh, adaptations, but it's very similar. And Mestre Vitalino is, is a, a very interesting uh, artist. Uh, he creates a tradition of this small clay sculpture uh, that I, I show in Mondo Povo Brasileiro, the hand of Brazilian people um, in other slides. And, and bring to Sao Paulo these this scenes of Sertão. Sertão is uh, a, a region of Brazilian uh, Brazilian North is, is um, not a region, but I've been, I've been translating. <laughs> I've been translating Sertão as backlands. Backlands, yes, yeah, backlands. Backlands is like the interior, the like deep in the backlands. Yeah, it's yeah. In the Mondo Povo catalog, we use uh, hinterlands, uh, but backlands is, is a good translate. Yes. So, uh, popular art from Pernambuco started this, this, um, this a kind of tradition or a kind of uh, continuous interest uh, into popular art in, in mass. And Lina worked uh, with Pietro Maria Bardi in a lot of exhibitions, but after the 60s, uh, Lina moved to Salvador in Bahia and it's almost uh, a divorce between Lina and Pietro Maria Bargin, but Bargin continues with this interest in two. I think that both uh, like uh, the popular art and the, the popular culture. Yeah, I, uh, think, I, remember, I remember studying a little bit about the very early exhibitions at MASP, and I think it's really nice how you define, you know, like, Bardi being more European, more Italian, as you say. Yeah, more Italian. Lina becoming more Brazilian over time. Yeah. But it's interesting because, of course, I mean, she went to Bahia and there's all that, but he was also very fundamental in this idea of the museum without adjectives, right? This is something you mentioned in the beginning. Bargin. And he was like, the, the Bardi, yeah, but there was like, the how did, were they called like the vitrines where they would put like very high, like modern design with the Etruscan artifacts. Oh, the oh. Yes, it's, it, this is interesting to, to yeah. think there about. There was a name, uh, no? Like uh, um, display of forms. Display of forms, yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. I, I didn't put in the, my presentation, but I, I can show it. Here because that, that was, you know, this idea of the art without adjectives, the art, be, be, like being interpreted and being conceived 
as a human fam phenomenon no? throughout yeah. history. So I think he was important in that way, but at the same time, she was the one really going more into the, the Brazilian popular culture. Brazilian popular culture, and, and but think, more think about than, than... I don't know if it's possible to... As the green is your form, as this display of forms. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to see, to yeah, see but you can see it's but... like these vitrines, and they were doing like this formal, juxtapositions between things from different periods and from different ancient Rome with uh, indigenous indigenous cocar and uh, like a headdress well. with uh, like a like an Olivetti I remember Olivetti, the, a machine that machine yeah yes yes, yes. yes. okay well, it is very connected this idea of museum of art not a, a, a modern museum or a, um, yeah, not a museum of fine arts, not a museum of modern no. art, not a museum of uh, contemporary art would be no. the yes. right one then, but... Open idea of museum, yes. Yeah. And after uh, popular art from Pernambuco, Bargin, with not this, 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 um, this is a little obscure in the, the history of Maspe. Uh, it's very difficult to identify the the, um, the hand of Lina Bobardi in some exhibitions. Uh, so I think that Lina wor worked together with uh, Pietro Maria Bardi in a lot of exhibitions, but in the documents, in the in, in the, the paper, sometimes is only Pietro Maria Bardi appears in the. So the what statement. what is the next show you prepare to show to us? Not as, as a, sh uh, a show, but a lot of artists like Emilio de Souza, Cassio M. Boy, Agostinho Batista de Freitas, that is in, in, in your exhibition, Maria yes. Cimidora, da Silva, too, and Francisco Biquibio La Fuente Guarani, uh -huh. um, a lot of uh, exhibitions uh, focus on indigenous and Afro Brazilian cultures. Uh, this kind of material. I, I, I move my slides. In this presentation, I mix the the, the history of, of exhibitions, focus and popular art made by Lina and other museums on other spaces like Bahia at the Iberapuera, organized in a space in Parque Iberapuera. Iberapuera this is the gorgeous photograph. I had never seen this picture. <laughs> it's really, really beautiful. It's beautiful, no? Amazing. And, and I, 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 uh, th this figure had called in Portuguese um, Carrancas. Carrancas, Carranca, uh, is made by Master Biquibia Guarani, is the most important artist uh, from this, this typology called Carrancas figureheads. And this exhibition was very beautiful. Uh, Lina uh, uh, mixed a lot of kind of material, um, candomblé, that is our uh, Afro-Brazilian religion mixed with uh, uh, popular paintings, uh, figure oh, head. I, I hear like the leaves, sense. the leaves on the floor, they're like a reference to the tejeros, no? This is... Yeah, it's, it's a reference to the uh, to tejeros, the space. Uh, the, the, the ritual the, spaces, right? The ritual yes. space from Candoblé and Umbanda. Um, to approximate to New York context, is Candomblé is almost the same religion of Santeria from Cuba. Uh, deal with this same kind of uh, 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 spiritual entities called Orishas, Orishas. Uh, a lot of names uh, are very similar. A lot of, of, of uh, traditions is very, very similar too. And in Brazil, uh, the leaves of pitanga, pitangueira, a small fruit, uh, is very um, secret, uh, very important in, in the rituals. And Lina put inside of the, this exhibition this, this spiritual material. So uh, she used a lot of scenographic uh, strategies in 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 a curatorial uh, display and in in, in the organization of the exhibition. Oh, sorry. Okay, the next exhibition in Northwest 
organized by Lina in um, Solar da Union in Salvador, Bahia. Solar da Union was an uh, old uh, house in Salvador and Lina, Lina uh, made a project of renovation of this space and create in this space a museum focus on popular arts, the, the uh, Museu de Arte Popular da Bahia, the popular museum from Bahia. And in a second moment, she creates the, uh, mo the Museum of Modern Art uh, of Bahia, the MAM Bahia, MAMBA, at the same space. And this exhibition was um, a key moment in her career. Um, she, she, she creates a lot of connections uh, between religion, uh, the workers, uh, the artists, and, and the, 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 the initial name of the exhibition was uh, Civilização do Nordeste, not with civilization. Uh, he, he tried to talk about this, not of uh, only of the peace, but of the thinking of the civilization, the culture of the civilization, the art of the civilization. And she tried to, to the same the same Kahanka again, right? The same or, Kahanka. And yeah. is and is, is, is this is, the collection of the museum? I was curious to ask you about it. Must be the collection. Yeah. No, unfortunately yeah. not. <laughs> Uh, as I said, uh, in this moment, I mix a little bit of uh, Lina Bobadje tragic uh, uh, exhibitions yeah, with mask yeah. exhibitions because it's very interesting to show this, 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 this exhibitions, no? I, I think. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, we talk about the Kahankas, the figure red. Uh, Lina created this specific display for Kahankas that use the same propositions of the glass easels, the famous and radical oh, glass see, yeah. So it's a, a concrete block um, without the glass, uh, the glass wall you know, uh, with a stick, a metal stick. Yeah. So it's, in my opinion, is a glass, glass easel for sculptures. For like three-dimensional, yes. Three-dimensional, uh, yes. With the same concrete, yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thomas, I have to rush you just a little bit. Yes. Okay, thank you. sorry. Um, well, I will continue with this. It's the same exhibition Lina tried to, to, to show in, Ro in Rome, in Italy, but the dictatorship in Brazil uh, closed the exhibition. It's the, the moment of the, 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 the the arte de povere fa paura generale, uh, the art of the people uh, afraid, the, 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 the generals. Is the yeah, like the art of the poor people, scared. Poor people. people, yes, scared, yes. And a, a small, like a, um, a pocket show about popular art in Sesc, is a very big institution in Brazil. Other exhibitions, Sesc. Other exhibition Sesc and Maspi finally. And here in Maspi, I this is the glass easel that I talk about with the collection, the Maspi collection, the second floor, our picture gallery. Is now uh, nowadays. And finally, the hand of Brazilian people among the poor. Can Brazilian. we go back just for like one side note on the previous image? Yeah, I think it's always very important that you show this so people understand that the the pictures, the paintings, they're all facing the same the same yeah. direction, right? So you enter the space, you see all the paintings, and when you come back, you see the back of all the paintings. That's yeah. like I, I, uh, the genius of this invention. Right? This is, and Lina puts the caption uh, on the back of the paintings. Uh, this is very interesting too, because first you can see only the, 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 the painting, and in the second moment, you can understand the name, the artist, uh, the, the location, the, 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 the date of the work. Um, this is, uh, is 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 a uh, small operation, but uh, very very powerful. So I I, I 
would you like to talk about a little bit of Mondo Povo Brasileiro, the, the Brazilian, the, the Hand of Brazilian People, that's a very important exhibition at MASP. And in this moment, uh, Lina puts in Avenida Paulista, that's the, the address of MASP, in a very um, um, rich part of the city and the most important museum of the city at the time. And it's the first temporary exhibition, the new open MASP building of Avenida Paulista in 1969. And, and we can consider the most eloquent and iconic gesture made in this direction, direction of the popular culture. At, in the museum at the time. The exhibition was organized uh, by Bob Arge with Pietro Maria Bargi, Glauber Rocha, and um, some other, uh, other friends of Lina from Bahia. And the exhibition is open to the public in, 19, in 1969 and featuring in the first floor of the uh, first floor gallery. Uh, so the glass easel was in the second floor with the, the Maspi collection with Van Gogh, Portinari, um, Monet, Manet, in, in the first floor, the popular culture. Lina creates a friction between this, uh, between this, this different kind of production, the canonic uh, artist, the canonic production in the second floor, and the popular uh, production in the, in the first floor. Uh, this is, is an image uh, important to, to okay, he creates this image to, and Lina uh, uh, organized a huge selection of objects from the vast Brazilian material culture, from the Sertões to the, uh, to the north rifts of the country, and fr from the south of the country too. The exhibition featured furniture, tools, machinery, musical instruments, ornaments, toy, fabric, clothing, figureheads, esvotos, religious objects, painting, and sculptures. In all between, and uh, she displayed uh, an imprecise number of items because uh, we, we can find a consolidated list, but we can identify the objects in these photographs like this. And, in, uh, and four years ago, Adriano Pedrosa and Julieta Gonzalez and I organize um, a new uh, uh, Brazilian, uh, Mondo Povo Brasileiro. No, it's not was the same. Was it like a full remake? Did you redo the show or you change much? How was it? Yes, it's not, it's, it's, the, same, it's the same spirit of the exhibition. It looks pretty much the same, I have to say. <laughs> But it's not exactly the same. I know, I know, I'm just teasing. But you had like but, some like very, uh, anchored elements, no, like I mean, like the the like the central piece. The central piece with some, uh, with the sand. Saint George, uh, that's the Saint George, right? Saint George, exactly. Uh, after the exhibition, uh, I discovered that this Saint George is Portuguese, not Brazilian. Oh, okay. but it's the, it's the same Saint George of the first exhibition. Right. Pietro and Lina. Uh, is that, wrong St. George, but it's okay. And this is from their collection? No, from Museo de Arte Sacra de São Paulo. Oh, okay, all right. And he, it's, 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 this, it's the same spirit, the same display, the same kind of object, but not, but not the same objects, no? Yes. Objects from Sertões. From Gasso, no? From like, the, from like the leather work. From leather work for workers. Yes. Sands, uh, sand, popular sands. Santos, exactly. Santos. Tanks, yeah. And this is Vitalino. The oh, beautiful. Beautiful, yes. From the, the first exhibition at Maspe, Art from Pernambuco. Is, yeah, so this these are, I mean, these are very much uh, like a, as you say, like a school of uh, of clay sculpture of like this uh, terracotta figurines. No, that's from uh, uh, yeah, small uh, figures made by clay. Yeah. And Vitalino created this school. This is uh, this aesthetic, uh, and um, a lot of people reprodu uh, reproduction this this aesthetic. Yes. 
and this this kind of of of, of sculpture try to 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 bring the day by day of these people, the day by day uh, on the countersign, the day by day uh, with the animals, with the, the festivities. It's like a, a chronic of, of her life in sculpture. This part is very interesting, it's focused in the Orishas from Candomblé in Umbanda the Afro-Brazilian religions, but with the catalyst uh, sense too, it's very common in Brazil, this mix. Figureheads again, Carrancas. Can, can you go back just for a second to yes. one before? One more, yeah, like what are the, the like this wooden sculptures behind the, the figureheads? The artist called Mugino. Okay. So this is also very interesting, though, because they were always very deliberately mixing artists with anonymous, with like masters, with traditions, and that was... Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Mugino is, is a, a, a new artist in the exhibition, at the end and I chose... Oh, you introduce him, okay. Yes, yeah. but... Is the same typology because Lina puts Agus, uh, Aguinaldo uh, Aguinaldo dos Santos in the yes. exhibition. Yes. So is Aguinaldo is is an artist uh, uh, and is uh, and was in the exhibition in the sixties. Yes. So we put and we put Aguinaldo and more. Okay. Uh, so we respect the typologies of the uh, of Lina, uh, the typology uh, that Lina chose to the exhibition. Oh, the quilts are amazing. These are from Lina's collection, right? Yes. Or oh, Ascocious, the quilts. The quilts, yes. yes. The quilts are the Lina collection. And some, some uh, this Nossa Senhora, our lady. Yeah. From, actually, it's from Peru. <laughs> we discovered yeah. after too. <laughs> A lot but, of Brazilian for the hand of Brazilian people, right? Yes, yeah. but at, at at the time, Lina think think it's is is made by Brazil ah, Brazilian uh, sculptor. But yeah, there's someone here on the chat box ex asking to see more of the quilts. Can you go back to that image? Yes, yeah, the color image. Yeah, I love the quilts because oh, I mean, uh, yeah. it's it's a geometric abstraction made by a. a Part of, of textiles is in is not a, a painting made by textile. It's for uh, for put in the beds no? and uh, this kind of. Thomas, uh, we have so, a few questions here. Are you? I mean, I'm sorry. Are you finished with your presentation? Yeah, this part I, I finish. I finish this part. Thank yes. you so much. That was wonderful. That was a, like a beautiful overview. Thank you so much. We have a few questions here that I want to shoot to you already. So was there, what was the reason that she wanted the viewers to be able to view all sides of the works? I think that's very interesting because we know like the glass easels, I mean, they're very dear to us, to everyone who works at Mask and, and beyond, but there's some people who don't quite get that so much, but uh, if you can just share with us a little bit about how did Lina conceive of the of the of the glass easel yes the glass easel was conceived conceived uh, with the museum with the new museum at the Paulista uh, uh, the, the, the the architecture of the museum is made by concrete glass uh, and the, the glass easel uh, are, uh, is made this, of the same material it's part of the architecture of the museum uh, and is part of th this idea of open museum, uh, a museum uh, with a free, um, with a traditional museum, with with uh, small galleries or big galleries with uh, thematics. Ah, this gallery is from European art. This gallery from Brazilian art uh, reflects idea of museum. Idea of museum very connected with the canonical uh, art history. And Lina tried to create a new kind of museum without this, uh, without these separations, without yes. 
this this hierarchy uh, organization uh, canonical organization and in this sense uh, the glass weasel is uh, reflect a, 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 a point of view yeah. from the, the the art i mean just go to go back to the the, pe the person who asked the question she says it's an amazing concept was wondering if it had to do with bring the art more down to earth versus something untouchable for the view. This is exactly what you're talking about. And this very, like the bare quality, you know, this museum that is very bare bone, it's very austere. It doesn't yeah. use the, you know, the elements of, of the European museum, the velvet, it's substituted by the concrete. The, yeah. the floor is made by a, a, a industrial material, industrial materials, yeah, a, yeah. a rub. I, I, I can show again the glass whistle, maybe. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. And there's someone also asking if the quilts are from a Brazilian artist. I think Sorry. they're anonymous, no? The quilts. Anonymous. Oh, no, obviously it's anonymous. It's yeah. very common in Brazil. You can, you can yes. buy on the streets. You can buy... Uh, uh, it's, it's yeah, different. Because here in the United States, there's a quilt tradition that is a little bit different from that. It's, it's very different. In the United yeah. States, you can put uh, on the wall. In Brazil, you put uh, in, in the bed from uh, uh, like a, a, a part of the day by day. Uh, I will show again the glass season. In this picture, you, you can see a, a, a Tintoretto, Erionimus Bosch, Tiziano, and Delacroix, Angre, Monet, all together at the same gallery. It's, it's, this is very, it's very yeah. radical, actually. And, and the public. You guys, I mean, I know you showed a little bit from uh, Mão do Povo, but you're also doing more friction in the picture gallery, no? I mean, you're bringing all the typologies of works. Yes. In contact with the European collection. You also inverted the chronological order recently. No? Yes, now we start with the contemporary art. And yeah. in, the begin in the end, you can see the, 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 the Renaissance collection. Yes. And, and the, 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 the works are organized in chronological, chronological uh, in a chronological line yes it's a it's a timeline but now you reverse so you went and you the timeline and and it's it's very radical too because you can see first brazilian um, contemporary artists and in in the, in the end of the gallery close to to the uh, to the to the the structure of the building you can see rafael you can see tiziano is um I was, I Go ahead, go ahead, Thomas. No, you can talk. I was, I was just, there's another question here, which is actually very interesting, uh, from someone asking about a Museu de Arte Popular in Barra Funda in Sao Paulo. Are you familiar with this museum? In Barra Funda? No. I'm not familiar with that either. No. So, but it's interesting, and uh, because there's like other museums, I, I think especially of the Museu Afro Brasil, who actually, which actually shows a lot of uh, popular art or popular artists. And now I want to just share my screen so we can speak a little bit about other uh, mass yes. loans to the show. I call them loans, even they are just reproductions, but uh, I call them virtual loans. So, so the whole show was really conceived uh, around this idea of the of popular art, and and there's and it really that's really something very interesting because it resonates a lot of the work that El Museo has been doing over the years, which is has to do a lot with the museum that doesn't come from a Eurocentric narrative, doesn't come from a canonical narrative but it does come from a, a narrative that actually spins off the understanding of Puerto Rican culture and art as the contribution of the European, the African, and the indigenous, right? So this is something that was really important for me to understand when I was curating this show. I think this is a show that, I mean, potentially has a, the museum has a strong vocation to to have a show like this, 
And the way it's organized is by four thematic chapters and four monograph chapters. But I wanted to actually share a little bit about some of the um, some of the mask paintings that are in the show. So yeah. we start with this one, which is the Eitor dos Prazeres, who's actually that leading image when we open the, the website, you see that image with the with the with the four guys playing cards. And this is the same artist. So that's that's also another very interesting figure in Brazilian modernism, working in the margins, but very connected to Brazilian modernism and this exactly. whole idea of uh, of the African sources, of the African Brazilian sources, and the experience of the samba, for instance, with the you know this urban tr translation of of the of the African beats, of the African drums. Uh, and he was a composer and a main figure, but this is not what I wanted to, sh to show. Uh, I wanted to show something else. This is just to make a connection with that uh, first image uh, of, of the show, which is the, the, this painting that belongs to El Museo's collection that was donated by the family of Barbara Duncan and the other uh, Eitor dos Prazeres painting coming from MASP. But this is, this is another you know, section of the show called Visible Invisible, where we actually uh, examine the contribution of uh, the Black Atlantic religion iconography in the work of some of the artists. So I was hoping, here we almost one-to-one, -one, we combine mask works with uh, El Museo's work. This is, for instance, it's a painting by Rigo Benoit, who's an artist from Haiti. I know you guys showed some uh, artists also connected with the, with the Centre d'Art in, in Port-au-Prince in the, uh, what's the name of the show? I'm sorry, Stories of Atlantica. This Stories is the show you, yes. you curated as well. So this, I mean, this section of the exhibition really uh, looks into this and we have the, the, you know, three paintings representing rituals from two from the voodoo. This is Chéri and Bassin, also uh, Haitian painters. But here we have Maria Auxiliadora, who I think it's a, was a very important show for MASP to, to do maybe three years ago, 2007. Yes. Three years ago, in the same year of uh, Afro Atlantic histories. So it's two, I think it's two years ago, yeah. Yes, yeah, three years, years ago. ago, sorry. This is the catalog. This yeah. is Maria Sumedora, the artist. Yes. And she was she was also a figure that uh, Ma, that uh, Bardi showed, right? He showed and wrote about her. Do you have so, a little yeah. bit of the yeah, memory uh, of that history? Bard loved Maria Ciladora, loved her work, and, and so uh, her work at Maspe a lot of times uh, organized two or three exhibitions, uh, put in, in group shows too. Uh, and he donates a, a beautiful painting by Maria Ciladora to Maspe. It's, yeah, we have uh, the painting. A scene uh, of um, guys playing capoeira. <laughs> but this painting is, uh, for me, is very interesting because it's a Umbanda scene, um, a, a scene of ritual in Umbanda, and it Umbanda. Was... Sorry. Go no, go ahead. Go ahead. And Umbanda mixed um, Catholic sense with uh, Orishas, and this this exactly same scene that you show, Rodrigo, is, is very symbolic because you can see a San Lazaro, a San Sebastian. And two two entities from Umbanda, the Preto Velho, that represent uh, the ancient, uh, uh, the represent the slavery, the, the this image of the uh, the, the slavery, and above a uh, um, caboclo that is a kind of not it's not a Urisha, but a kind of spirit that represents the local land. Uh, in Umbanda, the sense can be Orishas too. 
this is 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 cambiable, no sé. Um, Interchangeable, yeah. Interchangeable, exactly. This is another figure that I've, I've been very fascinated by. This is this painting was actually included in the Mount do Povo, no, Tomás? Yes, yeah, included in Mount do Povo. Do you know if uh, it was included in the first uh, version of the show when Lina curated? No, only Agostinho Batista de Freitas. Oh, you included that, right? You guys. You included, yes. I, 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 Adriana and I included because Rafael Borges de Oliveira was close to Lina Bobarge. Lina, uh, uh, they both are friends. Uh, Lina uh, moved to Salvador in the 60s and met Rafael Borges de Oliveira. Uh, and Rafael Borges de Oliveira wore, was very close to Zele Gatay, uh, writer and wife of the famous right, Brazilian writer um, Jorge Amado. So uh, Lina, um, Work, are, are close to, to was closer to Rafael, yeah. and this is a random blessed scene too. Uh, Oshosi is a orisha from is a hunt uh, uh, a kind of hunter is a orisha from the the forests, and is is the name is Oshosi in her in his hunter. Oh, I yeah. love Tabigoya too. Yeah, this is this is another. You know, I was I was really amazed by this tabibuya that was donated by Paulo Pardal to El Museu's collection. Oh, Paulo Pardal is... Yeah, a and Paulo Pardal figure. was the, the big champion of, uh, of uh, tabibuya, was really the guy who did the, you know, the discovery or, you know, introduced tabibuya. Uh, tabibuya and, and a lot of other, uh, a lot of other artists too. Um, he was a big Kahanka guy too. Kahanka right? guys, yeah. He, he uh, the, the Pardal's books about Kahanka is very important. Yes. Yeah. So we included these two Tabibuyas. But anyway, let's talk about another one because our, uh, actually our time is running very short. Oh, I talk so much. <laughs> no problem, you are the guest here today. So I wanted also to share a little bit about, you know, this juxtapositions that really make up to this show, it really constitutes the, the, the language of this show. Uh, there's this other section that is around vernacular architecture or around uh, informal architecture. And this is, I included Lor the Lorenzato from MASP collection uh, with Pedro Villarini. And Villarini is a very interesting figure who, he was a Puerto Rican painter uh, based in East Harlem. And uh, right here in the museum, like in the museum neighborhood, and he was, created this very beautiful uh, sort of uh, vernacular architecture, but very detailed scenes. And, and this, is, this is a painting of his, of Central Park. That other one is, uh, is, a, is in San Juan in, in Puerto Rico, but this is, this is a scene where he frames the skyline oh, on Fifth Avenue <laughs> from, from Central Park. It's painting. It, it's a painting, it's reproduced Whoa. from the catalog because I, we could not find the painting, it's not from the collection. The museum did a show in 81 of his paintings and this painting was reproduced there. And I wanted to juxtapose this with uh, Agostinho. Ah, it's, a very, <laughs> it's a very, I mean, close composition. Agostinho is also one of these very fascinating figures that, that Bardi <laughs> praised and, and launched and promoted since the 50s, no? It's a, it's exactly uh, 50, 51, uh, I don't know, 52. Uh, Bart organized exhibition at Maspe uh, with a lot of works by Agustin. Yes, it's in the, in the 50s, exactly. And this, this place, uh, Praça da Republica, that's the painting depicting, uh, is very important for Brazilian popular artists. Uh, Agustin Batista de Freitas start selling her uh, his work in, in this place in the downtown area of São Paulo, and Maria Auxiliadora too, and until to today uh, this 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 place Praça da República Republic Plaza is important for for popular artists until um, to today is 
So it's a place where people actually they display and sell their work still today, right? Yes, yes. But both Agostinho and Maria Auxiliadora start uh, at the, as in, in this place. And Barge met Agostinho at the first time at Praça da República. Thomas, this is great. I, I just want to see if, uh, if we have other questions here on the chat box. Yes. I, I think we are uh, coming close to the, to the end of our presentation here tonight. So I wanted to thank you another time for a great presentation, this great overview. Wait, I think we have one more question here. Oh, thank you very much. No, thank you all for joining. And thank you again, Tomas. This is uh, uh, another Popular Painters Conversation. Tonight we had with Tomas Toledo, Chief Curator uh, at MASP, Museu de Arte de São Paulo, uh, down in São Paulo. Tomas, thank you another time. And uh, to everyone who's uh, still with us, if you enjoyed this program, be sure to join us tomorrow. August 26, uh, we are uh, having the next curatorial program uh, of uh, La Triennale, uh, the show that we launched uh, in a couple of months ago or a few weeks ago. And uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope to see everyone tomorrow here and in the coming uh, programs of uh, El Museo. So, good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you again. Bye.